Hi everybody, how are you? Got an awesome one in today. This is a Kenwood KD37. And man, say what you want about Kenwood, but they made one hell of a turntable here. Um, <clears throat> pretty much, today I'm going to kind of just show you this repair that I had to do here on the uh, the arm that raises and lowers the the tone arm. But I wanted to first show you what it looks like in normal operation because um, it's actually quite unique and you might not, yours might not even be broken. Um, but I just want to show you what it should normally function. So if it's if it's unlatched and not playing a record, the Q arm doesn't work. That's because of the mechanism. It's not engaged yet. So once you actually engage the mechanism, you'll see the tone arm lower, the, the Q lower, and then when you can actually then engage up and down. And it's more evident if it's on a record playing surface, and you can see went up, and then now it depresses. So then when you hit cut, fully uh, turns off and then the Q arm goes back to the top. So that's a quite unique way of uh, operating in my opinion. This this deck really is quite strange and <laughs> I really do like all this all these quirks. See as you can tell this doesn't work. Well it does work it's just not the mechanism is not engaged yet. So as you can see once you depress it that's all good. But so mine uh, I even tested it in this situation that I'm doing right now about an hour ago and it was not working and that's what we're going to be uh, figuring out today so I'll, okay yeah definitely when you first start this let's start with this make sure the tone arm is latched it's cut so that the uh, the play arm is in this position make sure the anti skate setting is I just hook it onto this latch right here make sure it's not uh, affecting the tone arm and in order to flip it around to work on it, <clears throat> I just take the dust cover here, put it into the uh, the hinges, and then we'll flip it over. A number one Phillips with a parts tray, and just take out these screws. So what's actually really cool is that these feet are pretty much replaceable if you can find one that the screw fits into. But you don't have to take these out to take the turntable off. So you just you can fit a screwdriver perfectly in this slot right here. So all the screws are apart, and I'll start by lifting the hatch like this. And there's actually a whole PCB board under this uh, for the for the center spindle. And if you want a video on how to lubricate that, I'm publishing that the same day as this video is going out, so you'll see that as well. But the part we're interested in is this this whole piece under here. And I'm going to start by taking these screws out. There's one here, here, one under this cap, and one there. So. <clears throat> When I first had to unscrew these, these were these were so tight in here that I was like, that pretty much if, if it doesn't look like you're trying to break your turntable by unscrewing these, you're not trying hard enough. And you're just going to strip these screws. So yeah. those screws are now removed. Once again, it was this screw, this screw, uh, and that one, and that one. So you also want to get rid of this clip. It just comes out really easily. And you can slide that whole piece out. And this clip, just don't lose it. I lubricated this piece with some white lithium grease by CRC. So that piece, this shaft here, and every pivot point <clears throat> that I could see, like this one here, I just drop a little bit of oil. Um, one there, there's a few others when we get into the turntable, but just drop a little bit of oil there to keep things going. And essentially, this will lift up about that high. So you're not given that much room, but it should be good enough for what you have to do. And the part that we're here for is that guy. So first off, you want to make sure that your tone arm, we haven't messed with, we're keeping it, you know, locked. It's, it's at the starting position and the clip is on it. So that's important to basically getting this, this whole cover off with no problem. But then once it's off, you can't get to the second set screw that's under there without unhinging the tone arm so you can just do that by lifting this up unhinging the tone arm moving it to the side and you'll you'll know what i'm talking about once you get in the turntable it's a little hard to show but now you can access this second screw there's one here and there's one there accessing that screw is a little tough but you can get at it with a normal screwdriver a normal size screwdriver you just pull this up uh, as high as it'll go and there's this metal bar here which is basically the part that's preventing you from taking this whole thing up uh so just be careful with it. You don't want it to slip out of its spot and you don't want to break this bar. So if you go gentle with it, I mean, I've been working on this for about a half hour, you know, in and out trying to learn how it works and I haven't broken it yet. And I fixed the, 
um, the Q arm. So if um, if you're if you're cautious and you're preventative on trying not to break this, you'll be all good. With those two screws out, these here, let's put them in a parts tray. This uh, little metal piece will come out, and this hinge always wants to come down, which is really annoying. You can't really take it off because it's it's attached by the power cords and RCA, so it's quite annoying. But try to get it to stay up. All right, there we go. So <clears throat> you can take this piece out, comes right out, and you'll notice it's all covered in crap. Mine's lubricated now, but it was all covered in crap. So clean that with isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips, and you'll be good to go for that piece. That's the Q-arm right here. That's the part that when you move the Q, it goes up and down, see? So um, the first thing you wanna do is actually take it out of the assembly. And it's a little tricky, but you should probably use two hands and then you can just take it out like I am here. Nice, comes right out easily. And once again, mine was just covered in crap, especially around this little nub right here. That's where you wanna clean a lot with isopropyl alcohol and re-lubricate it. So once again, right here, right at that spot, See where all that white, white is now? It was all black with crap. So make sure you lubricate that. I got some excess grease here. You don't really need to lubricate this, to be honest. And then, once you're actually inside, right there, see where that is? That hole, just fill that up with lubricant because that's the spot that gets extremely gunked up. And once you clean that with isopropyl alcohol and you fill that up with lubricant, you're gonna be good to go. Here's the mechanism, that's the spot we clean. And see right there, that little, like, nub waiting for it right there there it is right there that's what depresses and uh that's what moves the arm up and down for the q lever so when this thing was all covered in gunk it wasn't able to lift up that arm so we're gonna have to clean this up like we did apply lubricant to it apply lubricant to that spot right there and then the part that was throwing me off for a little bit was that when you reassemble everything, remember how I said you have to take the tone arm off and you have to make sure that it's not clipped on anymore? Well, you have to have a certain orientation for this to work as well. What I mean by that is when you when you install this, when you clean it up and you re-lubricate it, and you install it, and you just go back to, wait, it's not seated yet. It has to seat properly. You'll hear like a affirming click. Yeah, there it is. And it's now it's seated into that. See that part in the hole? <laughs> nice. Uh, it's in there. So the, the, the part that was throwing me off is that the tone arm, you know, just say like you can raise and lower it right now, the tone arm, Q lever, it's, you have to install everything while the Q lever is in the raise position. If it's not in the raise position you, and you install this bracket when the tone arm is in the lower position, it's not going to work. You can assemble everything else. It'll, you know, operate fine, but it's not going to work because this bracket basically needs to be installed, once again, when the tone arm is in the raised position. So now I'll go back under here. I'll put the tone arm in the raised position. Gently lower it back. Everything looks good. It's seated into that slot. I just moved it by accident, so I'll push it back into the raised position. And so then I'll install the bracket. It only goes in one way. And I lubricated it a tiny, tiny bit. And then I will now reinstall the screws. I'll reinstall this. Now that bracket is reinstalled, make sure you try to tighten those screws as tight as you can. There's some mechanical pieces under here and just hit them with lubricant. You'll see them, they're pretty obvious. The, the, the lubricants actually on mine was still pretty good, but I replaced it anyway. So I just line this back up to the holes here and you might, you might just install this and then try to run the turntable, it's not gonna work. And that's because the alignment for everything kind of revolves around the tone arm being back in the resting place. So now we take the tone arm and find it, and I'm just latching it under the table, under the turntable, whoops. And I'm just latching it back. So now it's in the starting resting position. Like you would have a, a turntable normally in your resting position before it's gonna play a record. That's how I have, uh, it's, it's locked under that arm under the turntable. So now we can work on assembling this back together. So. I take this piece, put it back here. It goes under and over. That's good, I lubricated that as well if I didn't mention that. And then I just take the screws and put them back. So one of these screws looks different and that was for the or for this this shielding piece. Um, but I, so I like to do that one last. Okay, that's really solid. See, that's not going anywhere. Okay, and then for putting this back together, I found a little trick after doing this a few times. 
because you might be tempted to just close the lid, but the screw holes are never going to line up. But what you can do, hopefully everything's in frame, what you, yeah, what you can do is take these off the hinges. Just be careful. These are, that would be really annoying to break these because they're just, they're probably available online, but they're just a dumb expense. Okay, and then, then you're able to place it left on them. And something I also recommend doing, put in just one screw on either corner. Like I just do one on this corner and then one on the, that corner over there, just so I can put this on its feet to test and make sure everything works. Because you don't want to put all the screws back in. Something's off by like a millimeter or you just forgot to do something or you see a screw on the bench that you forgot to put back in and then you got to take everything apart again. Once again, tone arm lever doesn't do anything. And as you saw, it was in this position. This is the position that I was talking about. Like you want it in the up position when you're installing it. And then so I'll unhinge it, I'll hit play. We should see the, uh, the cue depress a little bit. And then I can move it down and there it goes. Works flawlessly. And then when you hit cut, it'll, it'll raise and then, it, then this doesn't work anymore. That's just because it's in the raised position when it's stopped on the mechanism. So once again, play it, move it to the side of a record, hit down and that's it. All right, awesome. Works all good. And then you hit cut and then it raises it again. This doesn't work. In that video when I was editing, I just noticed um, this part here was over there. It must have got messed up when I was, you know, taking this thing apart a bunch of times. That won't, um, if the part's like this, then the auto return mechanism won't engage. And if it's in like this, the auto return mechanism will engage. And one final thing for the arm lifter, there's two screws here. There's one there. And there's actually one hidden right here that I didn't know about until I read the manual right there. It's a very tiny flat head screw and that can help if you want the tone arm to raise a little bit more than it does. Oh right, it doesn't work when it's not engaged. <laughs> um, see mine goes up really high now and that's because I was messing with the adjustments of these screws. So if anyone has any more questions about this turntable, please feel free to let me know and thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.